What's up guys? Hi and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast, sponsored by BakedDeco.com. We'll talk about them a little bit later in the Pancast. Got a lot of other stuff going on today. It's a big day around here. Why? Because we just got this. Inside this box is a brand new Debouye Affinity stainless steel frying pan. We're going to open that up. We're going to unbox it, take a first look at that. Really been looking forward to getting my hands on one of these pans. We're also going to take a look at fryer oil. Got some frying tips, some fryer oil storage and filtration tips. Really important these days because have you seen the price of fryer oil? This jug here, a gallon of peanut oil, cost me about 16 bucks at Walmart the other day. Holy cow, oil is expensive. We're also going to take a look at some tips on frying jalapeno poppers. We're going to take a look at how to season a carbon steel French country or country French frying pan and more. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to do is open up this new frying pan. Now, in the last couple of episodes, we mentioned those new Debouillet Affinity pans and they ordered one. And it just came in. <whistles> nice, good looking pan. 32 centimeter, about 12 and a half inches. It's got this handle we've seen on some of the Debouye Mineral B Pros. It says it can be used on induction. Made in France. Pretty darn good looking frying pan. So this is just a sneak peek, kind of a first look at this pan. This is the first time I've picked it up. And the next video I do will be a big in-depth cooking and review feature on this guy. Really looking forward to that. All right, let's talk a little bit about carbon steel seasoning. Carbon steel seasoning. Someone with an unpronounceable first name, last name, Risley, wrote in, said, Scott, I have the Debouye Country Frying Pan. He's tried to season it five or six times. He's also nuked it three times, and his seasoning doesn't seem right, and his eggs are sticking. Yee, a lot going on there. So let's take a look. Now these country French pans, I happen to have one here, are some of the more difficult ones to season. Um, you notice that they have a very tall side profile relative to the bottom cooking surface. And that can make it difficult to get a uniform color from the cooking surface up to the rim when you season the pans. Now this one here, it has the coated handle along with wood elements in the handle. Really good looking handle, but this handle is not going in my oven. So this pan, I season it on stovetop only and I use my gas burner. So what I do when I season this pan on the stovetop is focus on the cooking surface first. I get that seasoned, get that darkened in. And then I just stand there and carefully, I have to use a mitt, this handle does heat up and rotate that thing over the flame back and forth until I get that color coming in on the sides of the pan. Now if you've got a flat top stove, an electric, an induction, what have you, it's going to be really difficult to get that color uniform up to the rim. You can just not worry about it. You can get the cooking surface seasoned nicely and then just try not to worry about the sides very much. You're not going to be doing any cooking up near the rim anyway. But reading between the lines with uh, Risley's feedback, I think he has some other problems going on. And that is in that if you've seasoned your pan five or six times and done that correctly and your eggs are sticking, most likely there is nothing wrong with the seasoning. There's nothing wrong with the pan. You just need to adjust your egg cooking technique. What I would do if I were Risley is get a dozen eggs and cook them one after the other, and I would change different factors. The most likely culprit here is he doesn't have his pan hot enough. Lots of times if your eggs are sticking, you just need to turn up the heat under the pan just a little bit and they'll slide. So I would try changing the heat under the pan. 
I tried a little bit more butter. I would make sure I got my eggs out of the fridge 15, 20 minutes before I was going to cook them. Let them come up to room temp just a little bit. And I think you'll find that if you change those factors, that will solve 90% of stuck egg problems. Okay, let's talk a little bit about our sponsor, BakeDeco.com. It's been really nice having them aboard. If you've never been to BakeDeco.com, you should check them out. They've got all kinds of great kitchen and cooking gear. They're currently running a bunch of promos for fall baking, holiday season coming up for Halloween stuff. Lots of cake decorating and baking supplies, but everything all the way up to commercial restaurant equipment. They've got a ton of great stuff. They got a discount for us here at Uncle Scott's Kitchen. If you put in an order of $75 or higher, use discount code SCOTT10 at checkout. You get 10 bucks off your order. Sounded pretty good to me. Check them out at bakedeco.com. John Ron wrote in and he says he's been frying jalapenos and he's having some trouble getting the batter to stick to the jalapenos. Jalapeno peppers are pretty slick to begin with. He's wondering if blanching would help with that. Will it soften the skin of those jalapenos? I think it might soften it a little bit and that might help a little bit, but really what I would advise here is what I did in that video. Try that triple dip method. Uh, when I made those jalapeno poppers, I dipped them in milk and rolled them in flour and I let those rest about 10 minutes. That milk and that flour, they kind of set up and get kind of sticky and they'll kind of fuse to the jalapenos. Then you dip them in that milk again, then breadcrumbs. Let them rest another 10 minutes and then I dip them and roll them again. And if you do that and let them rest for a little while, that batter, that milk and that flour and those breadcrumbs, they kind of fuse and get sticky and I think they'll stick to the jalapenos a little bit better if you do that. Now let's talk a little bit about deep fryer oil. Very important topic these days. I've put up some reviews of several deep fryers and every time I put up one of those reviews, I get feedback and people ask me, how many times can I reuse my cooking oil? So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the storage, the filtration, and how to really get the most out of your oil. Very important these days for two reasons. The first is that you want to use good oil when you fry food. If you use ratty, rancid oil, your food's going to suck. We don't want that. And two, these days with the hyperinflation in the economy, oil is very expensive. I paid about 16 bucks for this one gallon of peanut oil at Walmart, everyday low prices. Hmm. I noticed that some competing peanut oil was over $20 a gallon at my local grocery store. Absolutely outrageous that a gallon of peanut oil costs the same as four or five gallons of gasoline. It's out of whack. But very expensive. You got to get a few uses out of your oil these days else frying just doesn't make sense. So while there are no hard and fast rules, let's run through a few tips and guidelines to help everybody get the most out of their cooking oil. Let's start with the storage. You got two major options here. A unit like this has onboard oil storage and filtration. It stores in a hopper in here. When you're done frying, when the unit cools down, you flip this lever. The oil goes down through a filter and is stored in this hopper. This unit here has no onboard oil filtration. What you want to do here is save your jugs and use something like one of these filter funnels. Pretty inexpensive. You can get ones that have different size mesh strainers to strain out any of the larger particulate matter. It takes about two or three hours for the oil to cool down with this unit. And what you want to do there is just save the jug, put in the filter funnel, and carefully strain that oil through the filter funnel and save it in your jugs. Now what I do is write the food that I've cooked and the date on the front of the jug and store it in my refrigerator. So that's the storage. How often can you use the oil? How long is it going to last? One thing to note is that once you open your jug of oil and use it for the first time, you're on the clock. The clock is ticking. A good rule of thumb here is that if you store it properly, that oil should last at least a month and a half, two months, I think is a good safe assumption there. You've also got to factor in which foods do you cook. If you're going to cook things like french fries, like tater tots, things that don't have a lot of batter, things that don't have a lot of odor, then I like this system here 
the best. I can keep that oil in there and I just reuse it for french fries. I feel pretty safe saying that you should get four or five fryings of french fries over a month and a half, two months with this unit and system here. Pretty safe to assume there. Might get a few more, but if your oil gets brown, if it takes an off flavor, by all means, switch it out. Now, I like this system better using the filter funnel and the jugs. I like this better if you're going to use different batches of oil and cook a variety of foods. You might want to have one batch of oil that you save for your foods that don't have a lot of flavor, donuts, french fries, tater tots, that type of thing. Have a different batch of oil for onion rings. Have a different batch of oil for fish fillets, for fish sticks, that type of thing. Anything that's going to impart a strong flavor or odor to your oil, you want to keep those separated in different jugs. So I like that better with this unit if you have the storage space in your pantry or your fridge for multiple jugs of oil. What about things like fried chicken? Here is where the oil really degrades really quickly. When we do fried chicken, we soak our chicken in buttermilk. Buttermilk really leaves a lot of particulate matter in the oil. The oil really takes on a really strong fried chicken odor and flavor. So you're only going to get one use out of that oil. Now we might fry seven, eight, nine baskets of chicken, but only one day of frying with that oil. If you're strategic and want to stretch a dollar, what you can do is take your french fry oil, use that four or five times, then when it's kind of nearing its end of usefulness, switch it over and fry your chicken then. You gotta be a little bit strategic, you gotta have storage space for different jugs of oil, but that's really one way to stretch a dollar when it comes to cooking oil. And the final factor in longevity of your cooking oil is temperature. If you get your temperature, your oil temperature too high and your oil starts to smoke, that's really gonna degrade the performance of that oil. Now with the electric fryers, I like these because they have thermostats. These top out around 375 degrees. If you use canola, veggie, peanut, soybean, and oil like that, those have smoking points up in the mid 450 degree range, so you don't really have to worry about getting your oil smoking with these units. But if you use a Dutch oven on your stovetop and turn your back for a minute, you can easily get your oil overheated, let it start smoking. That's going to degrade the performance of the oil. Also make sure you don't start a grease fire. If you've got smoking oil, turn the temperature down quickly. Okay, if you enjoyed this pancast, look somewhere on the screen for links to other fun ones you might enjoy as well. Thank you for watching. Check out BakedDeco.com when you get a chance. And we'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast.